way too high. Okay, a little high. department on this movie has really excelled. I'm going to say and fire, okay guys? You can hear me, right? And it required pretty extraordinary sized things, whether it's white sands. Fire! Or, or the Hoover Dam. We're going to shoot something quick, and we're going to go to lunch, and then we are going to go downstairs. Or downtown L.A. Ah! finally saw what a 32-foot robot looked against a two-story house, suddenly you realize you've got to find places that are enormous to make these things feel part of the environment. You can't leave the trucks on the road. That's what I'm led to believe. What? On the side of the road. Because? Behind the dunes, so we can't see them. There's going to be a mini base camp down there, right? Yeah, we're working on that right now, just to find out how we can make it firm enough uh, to work in progress. Every day is a roller coaster for me. I, I, I don't know if it's the same for every department, but, you know, I find myself on the verge of tears one minute and then hysterical laughter the next. Ilt, a new guy I worked with, I thought I was going to give the guy a heart attack. I have a question? Yeah. He's just, I, 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 can't, I can't get the observatory. It hasn't been shot in five years. And I said, it's a big movie. You can do it. Go to the mayor's office. You can do it. This is the path. See right in there? This is where he's running. And the Black Hawk's going to come right up on that edge there. Can we even so do that? Helicopter running there? Yeah. A, a plan? Yeah. 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 Should be but I, I can't get the bridge with four helicopters underneath. I said, you could do it. Go to the mayor's office. It's a big movie. We're keeping this film down in California. We structured the budget in order to keep it in the United States, which is not to say that the movie couldn't be made elsewhere. It's just, uh, I think, easier and more comfortable for Michael to have, you know, a crew around that he's used to. Hey, Dave. Yeah. I think we'll let them fire this way so you can whip you guys in hell. You can at least kind of, like, in here, keep it, like, you know what I'm saying? I actually cut my fee so that I can shoot here with my crew that knows how to shoot fast and, and, is, and is good on the fly. Right, so it's good to go. So as soon as the plane gets the ground and stops, we should pull the vehicles forward. Michael likes to go hard and fast. He has the shock and awe approach to, uh, to scouting, which is supposed to be... Um... Oh, no, that's not Michael. That's a stealth bomber. Uh, Holloman Air Force Base is an extremely secure base with a great deal of uh, secret goings on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this morning, you know, they, we had a guy with an M16 protecting the AWACS because even though they know that they're here for us, they're still very protective of their aircraft. If the American military is called on, they will fight enemies abroad or even alien robots, if need be. You know, I want scrub brush by it, you know, tumbleweed, whatever, okay? I can show you how to get some better shots. What's that little, uh, uh... Driving into the center of White Sands, which is 300 miles, it's not literally sand, it's a crystal. To see that for miles and miles, there's no other place like that on Earth. White Sands missile range was created for the atomic missile tests in the 40s. And we had to make sure that there was no chance of somebody literally stepping on a landmine. So we had to engage the services of an unexploded ordnance company to mine sweep to a depth of four feet so that we could build our Bedouin village and then, ironically, blow it up. <laughs> got here and laid out the buildings, we realized that the dunes were moving. So the valley was actually significantly smaller, up to 30 feet, because of the wind. It's very hot. Uh, we had days 115, 118 degrees. That's the max so far. It could get hotter. And that's compounded by the fact that the sand there is really just white quartz that's washed off of the surrounding mountains, and it just reflected like glass. God! Hot. I'm from Puerto Rico, so when I was told, careful, New Mexico's pretty hot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I go, 
I'm from Puerto Rico. How hot can it get? It's hot. Almost had a heat stroke yesterday. That's kind of wild. It was hard because they had a lot of gear. Go, 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 go! Running and yelling and shooting. Because on my sets, it's like, especially if you do a military stuff, it's tough. I'm not like a very cushy director in terms of if we're here, we're here because I shoot really fast. see it, you have no idea how big it is. Hoover Dam is just massive. We had to do some sort of remedial work because a film that shot there last year didn't endear themselves to the Hoover Dam by buzzing the dam. It's a grave situation, gentlemen. Thank you for being with us. Good. Good again? Good. That's OK. Leave it. Ready? Something like that, Hamish. Huh, they really weren't into it at all, especially, you know, given Michael's penchant for blowing things up. <laughs> so we, you know, worked out with the Hoover Dam. We'd get certain hours early in the morning where we could be up on the top of the dam. Oh, got it if you can, brother. Okay. Trying to get back over there. They say it's over there. It's like gold. OK, here we go. OK, we're going down. Time to take those ramps down with us. Okay. Push time, push Come on, Scotty, you and me right here. And then as soon as the crowds came around 10 o'clock, we had to then go inside or down below. So we just scheduled our way around it, and, and it actually worked out fine. Both of you guys go on this side. Where's Johnny? You're not puking, are you? The scale of the Hoover Dam was a, a tall order. There's not many places you could do that because everything there is so gigantic. I think we became very familiar with the architecture, which allowed us to build a set that tied into it. What is this? When I looked at this Megatron hangar, this illustration, I'm like, that's the vibe of the movie right there. And it's amazing how one or two illustrations can just set the vibe. We use the playa hangars where Howard Hughes built the Spruce Goose. And it's this great wood structure. It's kind of narrow, but it's very tall ceilings. You're able to build a lot of different sets so you can go back and forth you know, in this kind of huge space, but it's kind of separated, and it's a great place to film. Basically, we were sort of using the structure as it was, and then embellishing and sort of making it look like a vintage facility again in a subterranean setting under Hoover Dam where Megatron was frozen in ice. Even though Megatron had been encapsulated in this space, for many, many years, he's still being maintained. So it was a little bit of like new technology mixed with old technology. Very much like Hoover Dam is. When you go in, there are things that have never changed in there. The first time I walked onto the Megatron set, I said, wow. Megatron. I had my son with me that day. When he saw Megatron up there, his jaw just dropped. I was so impressed with it that on my weekends, I would sneak onto the set with my friends just to see it. You know, he was 30, 35 feet, and he was only half built. Like, I'd bring three or four friends, he'd be like, you're never gonna believe what they just built. I never do that. I mean, I never do that. This baby's the first we found. And you want to just delay that, or so, so you can watch? No, 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 you're right. OK. So I just stood, but just louder and more, more off the cuff. This baby's the first we found. Boom, yeah. get out of here. I saw that set, I suddenly went, oh, Lord, this film is going to be everywhere. That was the first day that it dawned on me that I was shooting a really big